Hello, crafty friends. Good morning. Happy Saturday. I am Beth Roy, an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And this morning for my live, we're going to talk about watercoloring. So let me move my light here just a second. <laughs> so let's see. So if you come in, say good morning. Let me know where you're coming from if you're new around here. I know I have a, a few people that are on, I'm getting to know, but if you're new, I'd love to say hi. If you watch the replay, let me know that you watch the replay. Good morning, Jenny. Good morning, Linda. Oh, happy Saturday. <laughs> I feel like it's been um, just a week. It's not... <laughs> Oh, we've had a lot of fun this week. I've been out of my craft room a lot. <clears throat> so I'm going to try to get back into it and get busy this week, this coming week. So what have you ladies been up to? I know Jenny and I crafted yesterday <laughs> um, for a little while. It seemed like it went way too quick. Um, but what have you been up to? Good morning, Tracy. I'm still on my first cup of coffee. I slept in a little bit today. Let me adjust this just a tad. I feel like I'm crooked. Oh well. <laughs> Good morning, Vicki. Oh, so this morning I am going to do a little watercoloring. So who has done watercoloring? Um I have a couple stamp sets that I have next to me. Let me grab. I I forgot one. I'll grab it when I point down. So, um I'm going to do this technique on um basic white. There we go. <laughs> um I don't have, I am almost out of, I have a little sliver of watercolor paper left and my order is arriving next week, of course. <laughs> of course, it didn't get here in time, but I do want to show you all of the watercolor things that we do have. And I feel like you have um, a wide variety of techniques and things to do. So I'm going to show you um, this one that I use with heat embossing. Um, so you're heat, heat embossing your image and it's a little easier to watercolor and you can do some fun techniques if you have watercolor paper, which I'm going to show you a sample. I will do a video once I get my order this week, I'll do a video on that with the watercolor paper. But today we're using basic white. Um, most of us have basic white cardstock in our stash and you can watercolor with it. Um, but you just have to be careful not to oversaturate your paper uh, because it doesn't take water like watercolor paper. I also have shimmery white paper on the way. That is actually something I've never worked with. I've never bought it and worked with it. So I know it's good for blends and watercoloring. So um, I'm gonna test that out too. So we're gonna have fun. It is World Watercolor Month. And so why not? It's something I don't do often, but it is a different way to add color to your projects. So I'm gonna point down and we're gonna get busy. I'm just trying to read some of the comments. So I'll catch up with those in just a second. Let's see, I gotta figure out how, you know what? I don't know if I can point down. Facebook has updated. And I was slowly, um, nope, mystery mask. What? You can apparently put masks on and they will change every five seconds. Okay, well, we don't want that. <laughs> you guys want me to try it? Um, so I, I've heard this from other people that... I don't know what any of these symbols mean. I wish they would tell you. Uh, it looks like I'm just going to turn my camera around and face it down. So let's try, right? Um, here we go. So you can 
And I gotta take it out of my holder, so sorry about that, but I want us to be facing the right way. So apparently you can't flip your phone anymore. I knew there was an update, but it hadn't hit me yet, so it's hitting me now. Um, okay, well, we're just gonna go with it. We're gonna go with it. So, um, <laughs> I don't blame you, Tracy. I've been making Christmas cards. Um, we've had so much rain, so we had a, heat, a little bit of a heat wave, and then we had a lot of rain. Um, and I am, I'm definitely over it. Okay, I wanted to grab one of my other stamp sets here. So, I'm going to show you all of my um, samples and things that I did. These are the two that I liked the most <laughs> that we worked on. I have powder everywhere. Um, Linda, we're going to... Um, I really think that you can watercolor and have fun. And there's a, a ton of ways to watercolor. Um, and I like to show this because if you have not invested in all of the markers or all of the pencils, this is a great way to use what you have and still be able to um, add color to your lined images. Oh, good morning, Molly. I like that someone's clapping for me. <laughs> what a little sweetie. So I actually have been doing a mix of cards. I did start on Christmas and um, I'm working on video content for my YouTube channel. Um, I've decided to really lean into that. Um, I like doing the pre-recorded because I can record when my family's sleeping and then um, load everything there. So you're gonna see a lot more of that coming from me. Um, Linda, I, I don't know. Mine is not blurry, but I will tell you now they used to have it. I don't know if they have it anymore. Um, when you kind of scroll over the video, depending on, um, what device you're on, there's a little gear and you can tell that gear to, uh, change the quality of the video. So I don't know if it's on my end because on my laptop screen, it's clear for me. So, so I would change maybe um, when you scroll over the video. Now I'm on my computer um, and I think you can do it on your phone too. There's a little gear looking thing and you can change the quality of the video. And sometimes that helps. So... So today, like I said, I'm going to use uh, the basic white, but I want to show you some of my attempts here because I do have a couple little slivers of the watercolor paper. So um, here is one that I did. So this one I used um, the Happiness Abounds. I, you want to have a nice flower that doesn't have too much detail because you're heat embossing it. Okay, awesome. You, I'm so happy, ladies. <laughs> I know mine is on auto, so it just automatically changes as I'm viewing videos, um, depending on my internet speed. So I figured that out a while ago because I, I had the same issues, even on my own, my own videos. So um, on this one, I used that, this new set, Happiness Abounds, and, um, we did, I did some fun, bright, summery colors. And then on this one, I used hand penned. So you can see I stamped it twice and I stamped some extra leaves. Um, and these flowers are okay. There's not too much detail. So, so what I mean is when you look at your stamp, if there's a lot of detail uh, line work in here, when you emboss it, it, it may not look how you want. And I'm going to show you one that I kind of feel like was a fail. Um, so I used what my favorite flower stamp of all time, right? I used Blessings of Home on this one. 
and I, um, I just felt like there's so many little flowers and details down here, um, on this side of the stamp that it didn't come through well. Obviously, you can tell the big flowers what they are. You can tell what the leaves are. Um, but this section of flowers where they're really overlapped, I did not like heat emboss. So this technique for um, watercolor with the heat emboss, because we're going to heat emboss it white, uh, I didn't like with this flower. So that's something to consider when you're deciding what stamp sets to use. So that's my one I don't like. And like Jenny suggested last night when I got done, she said, maybe just stick your sentiment, your greeting there. <laughs> so um, obviously I'm still going to use it. I'm going to cut it down and I am going to cover that little spot. I do like it, but I just want you to be warned if it has a lot of line details in the stamp, you it may, it may get confusing or it may um, look like a hot mess. Um, so yes, I'm still going to make a card out of that, but I wanted to warn you of that. So here's the technique, one of the techniques I, I would, would have loved to do today, but I am going to do a follow-up video. So this is on watercolor paper, and the idea is that you're just dropping, after you heat emboss, you're just dropping that um, color down onto your paper, and when watercolor paper's wet, it spreads. Um, so this one I kind of, um, I, I had added the leaves. You could just have flowers so that you're just dropping one color. So I will do a follow-up with that because um, I do like this technique with the heat embossed. Now this is one, I kind of tried to do it on the basic white, um, but because I wanted all those white lines to show up. Kind of like a watercolor background. So the difference with this paper is when you drop water on it, it's not moving anywhere unless you put it there. Um, and you have to not oversaturate your paper. So um, I like this technique better on the watercolor paper. So today we're gonna do one of these and I have pool party, parakeet party, and sweet sorbet for my colors. And I'm going to show you how to watercolor with your ink pads. So yes, we have watercolor pencils, and somewhere I have cards that I that I made. What I do with those? Um, if you watched my YouTube video on the quick watercolor wash, you'll see you can use um, pencils. Now this is on basic white as well. You can use your pencils to create a background and stamp over top of it. And all I did was scribble pencil on there and then use my water painter to smooth it out. And depending on how hard you scribble, how much um, lead you're putting on there, or pencil, whatever it's called. Um, I don't know if watercolor pencil is called lead, but. And then you, you move it around or smooth it with your water painter and you get a cool background. So, um, this video is up on my YouTube if you want to check that out. So what flowers would you guys like to use? So um, I'm going to show you straight from the beginning how I heat embossed it. And we're heat embossing it white. Sorry, I've got too much stuff next to me. And I'm going to tell you all the things we're going to use. So um, we can use hand pen petals. I also grabbed out the painted poppy. So if you have this stamp set, you could use this open flower as well. These are great um, to add in. And I also have happiness abounds. So what do you guys think? And I'm gonna use basic white cardstock and I have it cut to, oh, let me tell you here. I think I cut it to five inches by three and three quarter inches. So that's my typical layer that I like to stamp on. Um, I think those other two were a little bit bigger, but that's okay. So what do you guys think? Jenny votes for Poppy. Oh, 
sorry, let me move a few things out of the way here. So here's the stamp sets. And I used this flower and these leaves on this card. And then on this one, I just stamped this big image a couple of times. There, can you guys see? So Linda and Tracy vote Poppy. So I think we're gonna go with the Poppy. Okay, awesome. So I'm gonna move these away. Let's, I gotta move a few things out of my way here. I have too much, too many things on my table. So I wanna tell you um, where to find all this. So we're going to, we're going to stamp in Versamark ink. You need Versamark ink to heat emboss. Um, if you don't want it white, there is a trick of you can stamp it in a color, then you would ink your stamp again and restamp it with Versamark and then add clear embossing. Um, and that would give you a colored. Um, I'm just going to use white. I like the look of the white. Sorry, I'm trying to adjust my light a little bit. Um, and I have white embossing powder. Now I keep my powder in just some, um, whatever these are, plastic bins that um, snap tight. But Stampin' Up! now has their tray back, which is in my order that's coming. So um, the new uh, tools have the embossing buddy, it has tweezers, it has a brush that you can move um, some of the powder off if you get it where you don't want it. I'm just looking for my tweezers. I have a pair of just tweezers that I've gotten um, from a, a craft store. They, I think, I forget what they're called, like they're reverse tweezers. Here they are. So basically what it means is when you squeeze it, it opens. So I do have a set that I, or I've had for years that I'm going to use, and I have my old embossing buddy. So if you get the new embossing trio, or what is it called? Embossing tools, I think. Um, let me look back here real quick, tell you the right name. It's called Embo Embossing Additions Toolkit. So it comes with quite a bit of stuff. So I have mine's on its way because I didn't get this tray before it retired and uh, Stampin' Up! brought it back. So that's on my list because you can emboss and then this little cap comes off and you dump it back in your container, in your little um, round container. So I can't wait to get that in. So um, we're going to use the water painters. And I like these because you can fill the tubes and you don't have to have extra water on hand. Sometimes I still have extra water. Somewhere I have a cup. I used to keep down here with a lid on it with water in it. Um, but I do like these because you can fill the barrel with the water. And these come as a um, set. And they have, let me show you the tips. Because I think these are awesome. They, We have a, a wide brush tip which you can make backgrounds with. The trick is um, getting them back into the lid. And then we have a medium tip which is mostly what I'm gonna use today. And mine's stained, I use it quite a bit. And I like to do a lot of drier watercolor where I'm just, this is barely damp and I'm picking up color and that's why mine is stained. And then we have a smaller tip. So these come as a um, trio, I'll tell you where those are. Now you can use a paintbrush and water. Um, but I like the water painters just simply because I can add the water right to the tube. Let me tell you where those are. I know they're here somewhere. So today I'm using basic white, so regular cardstock. Um, and there's lots of, uh, here's the water painters. So it's 13 bucks for those three brushes and they're well worth it. You can also use blender pens if you're using the pencils and the ink pads, but I don't think it gives as smooth of a look, so I prefer the water painters when I'm doing ink pads. Now, 
If you're not in heat embossing, you're going to want stays on ink. If you're watercoloring with just uh, ink and we're not heat embossing. So I just wanna um, make sure that you check out this page. It has lots and lots here. We have two sets of embossing powders. Um, one trio is black, uh, clear and white, and one is the metallics, copper, gold, and silver. So depending on what you like to use, um, you can get those. I don't have the black. I have, my white is a little bit older, so it doesn't um, look always as smooth. Um, it can go bad. Your powder can go bad depending on how you've kept it. So, um, but I do have white, I have clear, and I think I have copper and silver. So those are my my favorite things to color embossing colors to use. So we're going to, oh, we're using Versamark today. I think that ink was on that same page. So when you're heat embossing, you need the Versamark. Get back to that page. The catalog and I are not getting along today. <laughs> Anybody surprised? Okay, yes, Versamark was on that page. So um, you're going to want this ink to heat emboss. And I have the heat tool um, that's also on page 128 um, to do that. So those are the supplies we're using today. And I have some scrap paper here. To, um, do my heat embossing on. Okay. I think we're ready. You guys ready? So how many of you like to heat emboss? I feel like I don't do it enough. It, it's, it is really a great technique. But I just don't do it enough. So I'm gonna use my embossing buddy. Now I've had this one. This one's quite old from Stampin' Up. Like I said, um, there's a new one. I have a new one coming. So I'm just gonna rub my paper with this. And it just has a powder in it. And it's an, like an anti-static. So, um, that way, after I stamp, my powder is not going to stick um, anywhere I don't want it to, or it shouldn't. Um, it still may, but it shouldn't stick too bad. I think I'm just going to do this leaf. So... Now, you can use your Stamparatus if you feel like um, Versamark is clear ink. So, when I stamp, you might not be able to see real well um, what I'm stamping or where it's stamping. Let's see. Just trying to find blocks to fit all my stamps here. I don't think this will fit on there. Nope. Let's try this one. Okay. So I'm going to ink these up with my Versamark. And it looks wet. So if you look at your paper, you can kind of tell where you've stamped. And I just want to make sure I ink it up well. So can you see it's shiny? And then I'm just going to start stamping. Let's see. Let's do one over here. And you could do one, heat emboss it, and then see where it is and do another one. I accidentally overlapped some of mine yesterday, but it, it works out. So you can kind of see, I don't know if you guys can see it, it has a little um, glimmer to it when you look at your paper. And then I'm gonna stick some of these in here. And I like to stamp everything at once and then heat emboss. But you could stamp it and then heat emboss it and then stamp your next one. You just want to be careful about overheating um, your powder. So I'm going to stick one up here. Just 
That was a little close, that's okay. And I'm gonna stick in a couple leaves. So Versamark is a clear ink. It stays wet a little longer. Okay, I don't want, I don't want this little stem on there. So I'm just kind of guessing where that leaf is going. That's okay. Okay, so let me move these out of the way. And we're going to, yeah, I love copper. You know, one of the things that I like to do with the copper is I used to, when we had that Subtles embossing folder, um, I would emboss a piece of cardstock and then trim it down and cover it because I would just take this Versamark and smoosh it all over my paper. And then heat emboss it in copper and it would look like ribbon. So I love all kinds of techniques with heat embossing. I love it. Okay, so I'm gonna very carefully take my paper and I'm gonna keep my fingers up here because I know I didn't stamp up there. And I'm just gonna pour this white powder over it. And I wanna catch as much as possible because we're gonna put the excess back into this. Save the excess. So you can see I have a little extra powder right there. So I'm going to turn this over and just kind of tap it or flick it and get the excess off. We only want to use what we need and we don't want it to stick anywhere else. So that, there was one little bit. So that's what the brush is for that's coming in that new set. Um, you can use it to wipe off some strays. And then I just pour my stuff back into the container it came in. And I've had this for a while. I don't do a ton of white heat embossing, but I definitely should because it's it really is a nice look. Now, it's going to get a little loud here. So um, if you don't like that noise, when I turn my heat gun on, you'll want to turn your thing down or cover your ears. Um, I know sometimes it annoys me. So this is the Stampin' Up! Heat tool, and I'm gonna turn it on. There's two settings. I have it on number two. And I'm just gonna let it get um, warmed up a little bit before I put it to my paper. So, tweezers help you not burn your fingers. You can also use the tweezers um, when you're applying the powder. And then you just um, hold the heat over that embossing powder. I like to move mine just to keep it moving. And you can kind of see, I don't know if I can hold it up here. Let's see if you guys can see when it starts melting. So it's kind of hard, it's white on white. So a lot of times you see white embossing you see it on colored cardstock, but we're gonna watercolor with it, so I put it on white. And just, um, my leaves got a little bit down into my flower. That's okay. I should have embossed my flowers first, and then we're just gonna go with it. It'll be fine. But when you stamp onto watercolor paper, it is, you can really not see it. Hello, Zanna. I love the effects of embossing too. Um, Linda, to clean my stamp, you can wipe it off with a cloth, oh, like a wet cloth or your chamois. I clean mine right in my stamp and scrub with regular, um, regular mist. It's not like stays on, it doesn't necessarily need a special cleaner, it's just clear ink. So it just stays wet longer. So. Um, a lot of people like to stamp with it when they're conditioning their stamps. Uh, they stamp with the Versamark. 
um, when they get a new stamp set. Um, but you can just clean it right into in your scrub like you would any other ink. I think I got all of it. Here comes my dog to visit us while I'm making a card. Okay. So when you're embossing, you just want to kind of um, look at your paper and kind of turn it back and forth because you will be able to see anything that is still powder and the embossed part will be glossy. So hopefully you guys can see that on camera. I can kind of see it. So, um, oh, and I got a little, I got a little, um, I apparently held it too tight with my tweezers. So you can see this is all embossed and you can emboss, you can apply the heat to the back. It kind of helps your paper from warping. You're welcome, Linda. Yeah, what Zana said. Thank you, Zana, for that answer to Linda. So now we're going to get to watercoloring. And the funny part is I brought this scrap sheet in because normally when I'm dumping my embossing powder, I, I bring this in so my surface stays clean because I you get little bits of powder residue everywhere of the embossing powder. That's okay. Um, but I am going to bring this in when I watercolor. Don't. Don't worry about all my notes there. <laughs> I write all over my grid paper and take notes and do all kinds of things. Oh, Xana, I don't know. He just knows I'm down here and he really wants my attention this morning. He just ran back upstairs. Somebody else got up. <laughs> so um, he's just recently, he's over just over a year old. He's just recently learned how to use the stairs. So before he would sit at the top of the stairs and whine because he didn't know how to come down. <laughs> so now that he knows how to come down, every time I'm in my craft room, he feels like he needs to be in here too. And he's gigantic, so he takes up quite a bit of floor space. <laughs> okay, so I've got all three of my um, water painters, but I'm only going to use this big one. That's just my preference. I have a paper towel here that I just use to kind of blot my brush. And then I like to stick one right under my project just to protect all that grid paper I have under there. I like to reuse my grid paper. And so I just like to stick a paper towel under there to help soak up any water that might um, seep through my paper. And we have... Um, like I said, I have pool party, which I'm going to use that last. And then I have um, parakeet party for the leaves. And I have sweet sorbet for my flowers. Um, you can do two different things here. Good morning, Susan. Thanks for joining us. We're just getting ready to watercolor. We just heat embossed some flowers and leaves onto our basic white cardstock. So you can do this two ways that I like to do this. And there's lots of ways to watercolor with our products because these are water-based. Um, so I have tons and tons of ideas. Just um, don't be worried if I start hitting you with all of them, not all in one, one day, but um, so you can squeeze your ink pad and it takes a little bit of strength to do that. Um, and then you can open it and watercolor right into your lid. Some people don't like doing this. They, it's messy, but I figure it's right here. It's water, so it's not hurting my ink pad. Um, you can do that, or you can take a block and dip it into your ink pad and watercolor that way. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a drop of water. So this has a, it says push on the barrel. You're just going to squeeze a little bit. I'm going to show you both ways. And then you just pull that ink onto your block so you can color this way. And I, I don't want my brush very wet because remember we're using uh, basic white. And I'm it's kind of hard to see. You just got to get in there and go with it. I'm not worried about if I go out of the lines. I'm okay with that. Um, 
it's it's not meant to be perfect watercolor is a very free form of coloring i think so uh, you can just take your time and color um, you can also do this in your ink pad like this and then if i want it more intense i can just pick up right off my ink pad so this is going to be darker it's a little more intense and you could be um you know you could try to vary it now it does not spread and blend and mix like it will on watercolor paper so i'm just applying it and i'm not worried about really getting a lot of variation i don't want it to get too wet now the inside middle there where you see the heat embossing, you can dab that off when you're done. It kind of resists that ink. Well, it does resist the ink. So I'm just gonna continue on and color in my flowers. And there's no rhyme or reason. I, I don't, um, I'm not a watercolor expert, but I feel like anybody can do this. Um, I'm just applying the ink. I'm not worried about if it's perfect. And you can always apply more if you want an area darker. But the embossing is going to help you. So if you go out of the lines, it's, it's a little bit easier to see where you wanna go. But that's the idea. My dog is protecting us, if you can hear him barking. There's something outside our door. <laughs> and so he's protecting us down here in the basement. Now, I accidentally overlapped this leaf a little bit, but we're just going to color and not worry about it. I, and I didn't color the flower right there. I'm just gonna color it as a, as a leaf where it overlapped. I kind of like this because I feel like I can just be messy. I don't have to, you know, stay in the lines. I can just um, apply the color and it's just really cool looking. Like I said, my, my brush is pretty damp. I only did one drop of water there. Now, if you do oversaturate this, it's not the end of the world. Your paper just may start to pill a little bit. Um, he is huge, Tracy. <laughs> um, he is a great Pyrenees. So, he likes to protect us from all those birds out there. I think, and my husband just came in, so he's, he's going with him. So I'm just adding a little more ink. And I picked up this color over here because it's a little more intense than this watered out version. But if you don't like doing, you know, the ink in your ink pad lid, or you can't squeeze it, because you do have to squeeze it kind of hard, um, our new ink pad style doesn't have as much give as our old one, so um, you can use a block. I like to get messy, though, so it doesn't bother me that it's in my ink pad lid. And then this just cleans up with a, I just use a baby wipe, and then if they get too dingy looking, I, I take them to the sink and I wash them with some um, uh, dish soap and water. And you want to make sure you use just a mild soap. So to clean this, and I often do this right into my scrub. I often just squeeze it right into my scrub and clean off my brush. But you can also just take your paper towel and squeeze this. As soon as it runs clear, your brush is clean. Now I'm going to switch colors. 
Yes, I love him. He's a big, big sweetheart. He's a big lover. Um, but he is loud. <laughs> so let me grab, where's my wipes? I'm going to wipe off this block and we're just going to reuse it um, for our green. Just want to make sure you get it clean, get all the ink off of it before you put the next color on. So there's our block. And I throw my wipe, here's a little tip everyone. My wet wipe, so that I'm not putting it on my paper or my cards or somewhere else, I throw it right on top of my stamp and scrub so that um, it's contained there and um, it's not getting my projects wet. <laughs> so you can do that with your chamois too if you don't have a stamp case. Okay, so this block is ready for Parakeet Party, and I actually already squeezed this one yesterday and put some ink in it. So again, one drop of ink. Come on, drop. Um, actually, I accidentally did too, but that's okay. So if your brush gets too wet, just wipe it off and then pick back up, dip it back into your watercolor. That's how you can control the water. And I'm just going over where I did those leaves. And see where I accidentally overlap that? No worries, I'm just painting most of it as a leaf. It's fine. I did it yesterday too on the one that I did on watercolor paper because to my surprise, I don't think I, maybe I've never embossed on watercolor paper, I don't know, but I couldn't see it at all. <laughs> and so I did accidentally overlap something and I just used my finger to wipe off some of the powder. Oh, I, mi I missed a petal here. There's a petal there. We'll have to get back into that red. But you can wipe off where, you, where the powder is, even if you put the Versamark there and then, um, it won't, then it's not gonna emboss. It'll just dry that ink. So no no worries, just have fun with it. So I only put a couple um, leaves on there. I'm going to just wipe this out for a second because I did miss a little petal on this flower. Like I said, sometimes it's hard to see. We're doing white on white. Um, and as you add the color, So I missed this little petal back here. Or part of it. There, I think I got everything. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in with that pool party. So how many people love this color scheme? This is a wonderful color scheme for summer. If you need summer cards and you're you're looking for maybe something different to try. Um, the Sweet Sorbet and Parakeet Party are the new in colors. I like that they're really bright. I love that. I'm trying to get enough um, pool party in here. So this is pool party. Add a drop, and it looks a lot different than the color that um, we stamp with sometimes. And then I'm just going to go around. I could have added more um, things in there or made them closer, but I'm just going to take my wet brush and go around uh, my flowers and my leaves. And I'm not, um, I'm I'm not being perfect. I'm not trying to go for any shape. I'm just applying the color. Now, if you thin this ink out, it will be a little bit lighter. If you leave it um, with just a little bit of water, it's going to be a little bit darker. So that's something to think about when, when you're putting it on and what color you would kind of uh, like it to go for or if you just want it to be a light hint 
of color. And I am turning my paper, depending on where I want to add the color. Just be careful not to dip into that um, sweet sorbet because it will pull. And I just, I realized I just missed a little piece there too. So this is just helping me see that edge. So that white pops a little bit more. And as I, I can keep going back and forth, if I need to add more color or you just want to be careful not to oversaturate too much. Got kind of a dark spot there. Now the bad part about this is because it's not watercolor paper, once it's on there, it's on there. So that dark spot, it's not bothering me. Um, if it bothers you, you can add a little bit darker around your flower. So what I, uh, you can pick up straight from the ink pad. And darken it. And I can kind of tell this area, I'm starting to overwork my paper just a tad. Do you see that? That texture that's happening? So you, you just want to be careful to let it dry. And you could do the whole background or however you want to do that. I'm going to put some, make it a little darker in here. So because I'm, I'm, I don't have a super wet brush, I have some time to add a little bit more. But it's not going to spread and, and give you um, maybe the edges like it would on um, watercolor paper. But that's okay. If this is what you have, this is what you can use. And then I'm just going to squeeze that till it's clear. And my brush is clean. And um, I keep a bottled water nearby just if I want to need to refill these, but this is still pretty much full. I didn't use hardly any water and I didn't have to have anything that's going to spill all over my projects. Now, I did notice I missed a little tiny spot here, so I'm just going to open my red back up and let me show you this little tiny brush. This is our small one and I need to, I need to get the tip a little wet, so I'm just going to drip a, a little bit of water onto my paper towel and then I'm gonna dip into this. And I'm gonna use this right here. So you, I can go back around and get those little spots that I may have missed. Because this flower does have a little detail on the end. we go. And again, I'm just squeezing it to clean it. So what do you guys think? You think you can, can do this? I think, um, of course, you know my motto, practice, practice, practice. If you're, if you're not going to practice with the mediums and the techniques, you're not, it, you won't get better at it. There, that's impossible. I mean, that, that saying's true for every everything we do in life. Um, but I do believe if you give it a try, it's okay if it doesn't work out or you oversaturate one and that's okay. Um, I have fails too. I have things that I think are gonna work in my head and when I try them, they don't. So I'm just cleaning the Versamark off my stamps with my scrub. So now we're gonna make it into a card. So, let's see. What do you guys think? I don't have, um, I have a little bit of sweet sorbet and um, parakeet party, and then I have pool party. So, what happened to my sample cards? My sample cards, I used one, move this out of the way. I also throw, uh, see this is a little wet, so I, I usually double up my, my paper towel so that, um, 
I don't get all of the all of my surface wet. So on this one, I used Pool Party, and on this one, I used Sweet Sorbet. So what do you guys think? What do you want to try? And I will grab the papers. I'm just cutting a card base. Okay, so I've brought my trimmer over. We're going to cut some card bases. And I'm just going to throw some things off, off camera here. So I see a vote for Sweet Sorbet and a vote for Pure Keep Party. I'm going to just cut my card bases really quick. So I forgot, I bought the in colors in these big 12 by 12 sheets because I typically do um, mats with them. And so if you're doing, um, if you're cutting all four inch by five and a quarter mats, the 12 by 12 paper is great. You buy them in color families. Um, so then I forgot that I, ha I didn't order the eight and a half by 11, which I use mostly when I'm cutting card bases because you're just cutting your sheets in half. So let's cut this at eight and a half and get this cut down. And then I'm going to cut this at um, five and a half. So we need to cut it down to eight and a half by five and a half. And those are inches. I know um, that's what we use here in the US. And then I'm going to score it at four and a quarter. And so I love this trimmer because we have the scoring blade and the cut, cutting blade right on the same surface. So there's Parakeet Party. And I'm gonna show you, here's a little tip for your eight and a half by 11. Um, <clears throat> I like to, because I cut this into bases, I put it in at four and a quarter I score my whole sheet, then I turn it and cut it at five and a half. So I scored it on the eight and a half side at four and a quarter, and then I turned it and I, I'm cutting it on the 11 inch side at five and a half. So I end up with two card bases and then I can put one away and I have a little tub that I have pre-cut card bases and then they're all ready to go. Or if you're making a card set, it's just an easier way. I must have scored that slightly wrong. Let's see here. There's my bone holder. Or this paper could be off. Sometimes my paper sizes are off about an eighth of an inch. So I'll just fix that so it's even. And then I have this piece that I already cut. I'm gonna figure out what how what size this is cut to. Let me six. Okay, so let's cut this to eight and a half. And five and a half. So I just cut the 12 by 12 piece down. Now on the eight and a half side, I'm scoring at four and a quarter. And my cutting blade. Note to self, order the end colors in eight and a half by 11. Okay, so here's our colors. I love this color scheme. Raise your hand if you, if you love this color scheme. This really is a very pretty red. So here's all of our bases. And Let's try it out and see what we like. So here's the other two. I only see two votes. 
what are we gonna do? Okay, maybe you'll like it better. Now, these were a little bit bigger. These sheets were cut to five and a quarter by four. Um, and these are cut a little bit smaller. So you have a wider border. So either way is fine. Um, use what you have or however you cut it and it will work just fine. I love it. <clears throat> I think I'm gonna play with it a lot more this week because I feel like I just need some bright and fun cards. So here's um, Sweet Sorbet and it really picks up on that red, that, that color, the red color. Here's Pool Party, which I typically choose because I like it, I just feel like it's so subtle. But if you really want a pop of color, you can pick Parakeet Party. And that is wow, right? Um, really pops off the page at you, love it. Now my greetings I stamped in basic gray um, just so that I, I felt like it was going to be easier to read. So if you stamp in Pool Party, it tends to be kind of light. You can still do that, but it's a little bit light. Parakeet Party is a very bright color. I have not attempted um, stamping any of the greetings in that color, but I don't know if it will show up well. It may. Um, and Sweet Sorbet, you certainly could use that color for your greeting, depending on... Um, how you want your finished card to look. So on these two cards, I used basic gray. What do you guys think? What kind of greeting do you want to have? So our Painted Poppies does not have greetings. So we can choose anything. You could pick one of these from the hand penned. Uh, my favorites here lately are these um, Happiness Abounds. I love this font and I love that they're like a skinny greeting. And what else do we have? Um, <clears throat> let's see, we have Peaceful Moments. Now this originally went with the, when po the Poppy, per um, Poppy Parade, my goodness. When the pop Painted Poppies came out, it was a very big suite and it had this stamp set um, and the, the Painted Poppies together. So I love this has lots of different sayings in there. We have the brand new go-to greetings, which I love. Um, very scripty font, and you have thinking of you, happy birthday, just a note, and there's one tiny hello. So what do you guys think? How do you wanna finish this off? Now, for the inside of my card, I can just take Another piece of that basic white. Like I said, I like to keep mine chopped up. So I chop up one sheet at a time or two or three sheets and I keep them in a little container and I, I cut them to my size that I like to use. So I either cut them at five and a quarter by four or five by three and, uh, three and three quarters. And those are my standard sizes that I like to use. I like to use a fourth. So I just subtract a fourth from each layer. So Tracy says, just a note. I love stamping it, just a note, because then I feel like you can really tailor the, tailor the inside of the card for when you need it. So if you're just making cards, you're not sure um, who they're gonna be for or what occasion you want them, just a note is perfect. And we have a large just a note. I, and then we have a little teeny tiny just to know. So this is a pretty a big set. So we have this size, and I like that font, and we have this one. Let's see. And then we have this really big scripty one. Okay, so it looks like everybody's leaning towards parakeet or sorbet for the card base. I hope I think that's what you're what you're answering me. So we're gonna have. I wish I knew how to do the poll. I wonder if I I don't know how to do it. There's some way that you can do a poll and everybody votes. <laughs> 
someday I'm going to learn how to use these features and they'll probably change them as soon as I learn. So, okay, so I need a vote. Card base, parakeet party. So just put uh, parakeet or sweet sorbet. Just put sweet. So parakeet or sweet or P or S. Is that easier? P for parakeet party, S for uh, sweet sorbet. And I'm going to show you how we can stamp the inside. I see a sweet. This is probably um, the, the hardest part for me. So sometimes I just make one of each. <laughs> oh, Parakeet Party is winning. Okay, so we're going to switch this over here. I, I love it. Now, and you'll notice my paper is kind of... Um, curling up because we heat embossed it and then we watercolored it. So you can take a clean, clear box, make sure it's clean, and kind of just put it on top of there while you're deciding what else you want to do. Okay, so just a note, let's do S for small, M for medium, L for large. Small, medium, or large. Can you guys see that okay? I know I have a little bit of a glare. So we're gonna stamp up here. I'm not gonna put it, I'm just, this is like a simple stamp. We're just gonna stamp right onto this. This one I used to strip um, because I didn't really have anywhere to stamp. And then this one I just stamped right onto my layer. So we have large, we have medium, we have small. And they really all work. If you wanted to use up your strips, you could stamp um, the two, the small and the medium fit probably on your strips of paper. Oh man, it's like a tie. I see two large, two medium. We need a tiebreaker. Who wants to vote? Jump in there, I promise, we don't bite. This is a community effort for completing a card. I love doing it this way because you guys really push me sometimes out of my comfort zone and what I would have picked. And I love that because um, I was just thinking, when would I use Parakeet Party for a card base? Um, it's a, I love this color. It's so fun and bright. Um, and I'm thinking of lots of, you know, um, when we had the uh, lemon lime twist, I loved that color. <laughs> large flower, so large. Uh, man, Bob. Zach's on a run, so I can't ask him either. Do you think Bear would be good at <laughs> breaking the tie? <laughs> he can pick the winner. You know how they have the animals pick, um, choose the winners they always do that for like football and different different things okay well so i'm gonna put the small one away because no one said that one so i'm gonna put that one away <laughs> i don't know <laughs> Tracy, probably so. He'd probably just eat whatever I stuck in front of his face. Okay, Vicky, Vicky, Vicky's going to be the tiebreaker. Okay, Vicky, we've picked Parakeet Party. <clears throat> now we're trying to pick um, the medium sized, just a note, or the large. I don't know if that's Joe that I hear upstairs or not. It could be, it could be Bear. They sound about the same. Um, so we're trying to decide large sentiment, which I do like. That's probably something I would pick. You notice on this one, I picked a big sentiment or greeting to fill that space. Um, but I also like just adding in a little subtle greeting as well. And you could stamp this one down here if you really wanted a lot of white space. But I tend to like to fill things up. So that's my way of thinking and I love to see what you guys pick. I love it. This is what being a Stampin' Tribe is all about.
Ooh, Vicky votes medium. Okay, medium it is. Now, you know, don't forget, I have a couple more cards to finish. So I'm going to pick that large just a note and put it on one of my other cards. Because, you know, I like to see how it all looks. Okay, so normally I would, I would grab out my Stamparatus and use it to stamp my words because I've done all this watercoloring and all this work and the last thing I want is to stamp my greeting sideways. But guess what? I'm gonna wing it. Y'all Sorry about that, did I pause? Sorry, I was getting a phone call from my son but he's gonna have to wait while we finish this card. So I like to use either B or C for, for this size stamp, just because it's, um, I have less chance of rocking it. And I like that this font is a little scripty, so if, um, if it's a little crooked, you're not gonna notice. So, okay, so one last choice. We gotta do it quick. Um, I stamped all my originals in basic gray, but we can also use our colors we used to watercolor. Sorry about that, guys. I have my phone on um, do not disturb, but if my son, because he's on my favorites list since he's always traveling and sometimes out of comms with us, um, I have him on the favorites that if he calls more than twice, it, it comes through on my Do Not Disturb. But he, he can wait a few minutes, I'm sure. He's, he's okay. So, okay, so hopefully I'm still rolling. My phone says I am. So we need to decide our font color. I prefer the gray just because I think it kind of helps all those other colors stay my focal point. But you certainly could use Pool Party, Parakeet Party, or the Sweet Sorbet. Um, it's just, you know, depends on what you want your card to look like. Let me grab a scrap here. Let me grab a scrap piece. And this is what I do sometimes. Now, I'm not um, gluing this on, but I'm just going to ink up just a note. I've got too many things over here. I can't clean my stamp. So there's gray. I see a lot of gray, but you could do this. You could test out what it looks like stamped because you may look, see it stamped in a color and hate it. And you don't want to put that on your card. I get it clean. I should have stamped the red last. Everyone says gray. So this is part of your process. Make sure I got my stamp clean. And make sure my stamp got cleaned off. Um, obviously, if I stamp in gray, it won't matter. So I'm picking up some pool party. So there's all my colors and how they stamp in that font with that stamp. So you can kind of see, and so if I stamped it there, that's what it's gonna look like. If I use that color, there's the parakeet party, and then there's the just a note. And I, I think the pool party could work too. It just makes it really subtle. It's not a pop out. It, the greeting's not gonna pop out from that. And because we only use pool party on the background, that color could work too. I love pool party too. 
I love pool party too, but a lot of times I don't stamp my greetings in the colors. I always, almost always use a neutral because I just feel like it grounds my, my greeting a little bit more. So that is one way to test out what color you may like. So let's go with gray, just so, just so you can see. Don't, you don't have to stamp on here and then hate it. You can grab out those scraps. Lord knows we have lots of them, right? If you are stamping all the time, you have lots of those, um, lots of those strips. So use them to test things out. So I'm, I'm just inking this up. I'm making sure I don't have any halos. There we go, just a note. Yeah, I like the sweet sorbet too. I don't know if I like it with the parakeet party base. And that's something that you kind of look at too when you're deciding all those colors is if you like it with the card base. So now I wanna use some pretty strong adhesive to hold this down because we've worked this piece of paper a ton. We've heat embossed it, we've watercolored it, so. Um, I want them, I'm using liquid glue, but I would use seal plus. You could use tear and tape. Um, but I would use, you know, something that's going to keep it sturdy because it is a little warped. I'll try to get it even. And I'm going to use where that clean block go. Did I stick it? I stuck it back in here. Okay, just making sure that's clean. I'm going to put this down on there just to give it a little pressure while it's gluing. And I'm going to quickly stamp the inside. I'm going to take my flowers and I'm just going to stamp them in the sweet sorbet. There's that scrap sheet here. Since I'm not really adding color to them, I'm just going to stamp them in the sweet sorbet. And you could add in a leaf if you wanted. And of course, uh, you know, another greeting if you wanted to stamp happy birthday, but I like to write on mine, so I'm going to leave it blank. Bye, Linda. Have a great weekend. I hope you give this a try. Let me know how it goes. Now I'm just going to pop this in on the inside and we have a finished card. I love it. So thank you all for spending some time with me this morning and learning this watercolor technique. It's just a fun way to add color to your cards. It's a little bit different. And really, you can use your favorite colors because you're using the ink pads. So you can get a, a lot of use out of that. You can even re use the re-inkers to watercolor. I have done that lots. I've, I've done it on canvases, which I will show you that. Um, I have one right now that I need to fix, but um, I've even embossed on a canvas. Here's a canvas I did, and this is actually pretty peacock, so I did this a while ago. But just, just think about all the ways you can use your ink. So these are stamped with stays on, and I didn't like this stamp, so I got to go back in and kind of get rid of that. Um, I can just re-wet this, and all of that's going to move. I can add more ink, but this was... Um, a canvas that I did. It's just one of those really thin ones. 
and I use the reinkers and the ink pads to add color. And then I heat embossed some um, leaves on there. But I will say heat embossing on this because everything was wet was not easy. So I, I really had, I needed the patience to wait for things to dry. But you can have a lot of fun with your ink pads and the reinkers. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you give this a try. Here's all our cards and the card we made today. Um, have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Oh, and if you need any of the watercolor products, I almost forgot to tell you, it is celebration. So I want you to get the most for your money. Um, you can go to bethroy.stampinup.net and click on the shop now. And when your order reaches $50, you get to pick a level one um, celebration item that's for July and August. So if you need any help ordering or you need help figuring out what you need for the project you're doing, please feel free to message me. That's what I'm here for. I can help you narrow things down and what you need and maybe things that you don't need right away. So take care. You guys have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you soon. Bye.